which we are in what I refer to sometimes as my bat cave. Most people call it a man cave. This is all stuff that really meant something to me from my childhood. Gosh, as a kid growing up, moved to a little town right outside of Cleveland with my parents and became a huge Cleveland sports fan. I was right at the age, I was like in my teen years when Beatlemania hit. Still there wear a Superman ring instead of my WWE Hall of Fame ring because five years old, I became an unbelievable superhero fan. And that's when I first realized I could draw. When it comes to art, I realized that, you know, it's, it's a God-given talent that in all my life have really taken for granted. I think in the, like my first grade and the uh, teacher wrote to my parents, you know, talk about uh, what great artistic ability I had. It was just something, like I said, that just always came natural and I was always just shocked that everybody couldn't draw. I think the first time that uh, my, my artwork got any real attention was when my dad and I were going to the live wrestling shows. This is Lance Russell from the Memphis Mid-South Coliseum. Memphis wrestling, it was the biggest thing that happened in the city. What a match this one has been so far. The first time I watched wrestling was with my dad. My dad actually worked as an usher, and that way we got free tickets. When I was watching the wrestling, I watched it really, really closely. I watched the moves that the guys were doing, and I would try to think in my mind how you would emulate those things. I remember starting to draw some pictures of the wrestlers. Somebody said, man, you ought to take some of those pictures and send them into the TV station that airs wrestling every week. Jerry was um, 14 or 15, and he uh, came to me by the mail. He sent in some drawings on wrestling. Sure enough, about halfway through the show, he says, Dave, we have a young fan that sent in some pictures that kind of illustrate what took place. And I would use it to tell people about what happened last week down at the auditorium. I thought, man, couldn't get any better than that. But it did, because a week later, I got a call from Lance Russell himself. And he said, listen, everybody loved your artwork. Maybe you could come over to the studio next week, show your artwork, and everybody wants to see what you look like. Plus, Jackie Fargo wants to check with you about having you do some artwork for his nightclub in Memphis. Fabulous Jackie Fargo. I mean, he was like The Rock uh, or, or John Cena. He was a top guy in the Memphis territory at that time. Up here and a guy named Eddie Bond own a nightclub in Memphis, and he wanted me to come to that nightclub and literally paint caricatures of he and Eddie Bond all over the inside of his club. For the next few years, he would send me on errands and all of this different kind of stuff, but I didn't mind. I just, I still got to be around him, you know. Being around Jackie Fargo, the huge celebrity that he was, I mean, it just really turned my head. Girls were going crazy and I'm looking around and I look up at him and I said, now that is what I want to be. Forget about being an artist. Oh. I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I would love to get into this business as a wrestler, but I was just too embarrassed to say anything to Jackie. I mean, I just think he was just looking at me as just a punk kid that could had some artistic ability. At that time, I had heard that uh, every Saturday night in West Memphis, Arkansas, right across the bridge, they have, uh, they have live wrestling matches. I would talk to the promoter, and next thing you know, I'm in the wrestling business. Now, I had never even been in a ring before. I'm fixing to step into a ring, an actual wrestling ring, without having any training. I get tagged in, first time I'm in the ring now. So man, he grabs me, he throws, runs across the ring, he throws me out of the ring. The next thing I know, I'm waking up. I'm like this, I'm waking up. We're already back in the locker room, and I said, what, what happened? And all I remember was like hearing a loud pop when I got thrown out of the ring. Yeah, that was your head hitting the concrete floor. You've been knocked out for about five minutes. Stepping into that ring for the first time with people, they're cheering for you, they're clapping their hands. It was just uh, 
something I had never experienced before, and I knew I wanted to do it again. Jackie Fargo hears about this, and he gets upset. He said, kid, you don't want to do this. You're too good an artist. Stick with art. You don't mess with the wrestling. And I said, Jackie, please, I just want to do it in Memphis. He said, all right, kid, if I stick my neck out to the promoters and tell them to book you on TV, will you do the one match and then forget about it, go back to being an artist? I said, I promise you, Jackie, I will. And of course, here 52 years later, I'm still doing it. Lawler from very, very early on was a star. All I cared about was being on TV. And, I, you know, I just, I loved it if somebody would ever ask me for an autograph. Even though I was only getting to wrestle once a week, it was a great learning process. He was terrific at bumps. His basic wrestling knowledge was advanced for the experience that he'd had. But what he did that really set him apart was that he connected with the fans. If people related to him. He was one of them. Jerry Lawler was uh, different in the fact that he was real. It just kind of came natural to me. And Jerry Jarrett started putting me higher up on the card until I would reach main event status. Jackie Fargo was getting older and I was in need as a booker and promoter of a single wrestling star. And I'm suddenly pushed into the limelight in a, in a feud with Jackie Fargo, my mentor. He's a very tough opponent, and he's always competition when you get in the ring. It was the program that passed the torch from Fargo to Lawler. I said, Jackie Fargo, you're a legend. You're the best. You've been the king of Memphis wrestling for years. But you're looking at the kid that's going to knock you off your throne. And somehow I won the match. And as I was going back to the dressing room, I saw a lot of young people. They were patting me on the back. And some of them were saying, hey, you're the king now. You beat Jackie Fargo. You're the king. The next morning, Memphis TV, I come walking out with the crown on, the robe on, and I was, from that moment on, the king of Memphis. See, there's a price you pay for being a wrestler. This was not supposed to happen. Whoa. 